The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hey, Kara Oosterhaus here with realagriculture.com. We are back here today with another Canola School episode, and I have here with me John Gavlosky, who is the Provincial Entomologist with Manitoba Agriculture and Resource Development. How's it going on your end today, John? Things are going good here. Awesome. So we are here today to talk about wireworms and how we can mitigate uh, some of the damage they might do heading into this season. So what can you tell me about wireworms and some of their how they work, I guess. Okay, so wireworms are the larval stage of a beetle called the click beetle. And they differ from a lot of our beetle larvae in a few ways. Um, one is they have these multi-year life cycles where they're in the larval stage for a few years. Now, there's different species of wireworms across the prairies. The one that's most common here in Manitoba, uh, it has two or three years as a larva in the soil before it becomes an adult click beetle. Some other species, um, the uh, prairie grain wireworm, which is probably a bit more dominant further west, they will have four or five year life cycle. So you've got these larvae in the soil for prolonged periods of time. Um, wireworm larvae, they're beetle larvae, they never come above the soil surface. So their feeding is strictly below ground, which means they're not damaging your leaves and things. They're focusing on your roots and your seeds, but it also means it's tough to get at them with an insecticide. You cannot use a foliar insecticide and get control of the wireworm larvae that are in your field. Uh, the only thing you can do insecticide-wise would be to have a seed treatment containing an insecticide on your seed. Okay, and what sort of uh, economic thresholds are around for wireworms? Unfortunately, we really don't have uh, researched economic thresholds. Uh, if people want to try to assess levels and um, make a decision for themselves, you can put what we call bait balls into the field. You can soak some corn or wheat or oatmeal, uh, make a bit of a ball out of it, and bury it into the soil. Use a flag or something to mark the area. Let it sit for a week or so and dig things up. If you're finding any more than one or two per bait ball, uh, you probably do have a, a population that could be damaging to your crop. If you're uh, having trouble finding them doing that, the decent chance you, you don't have a problem. However, that being said, um, bait balls can really vary in how effective they're going to be. The uh, wireworms are using carbon dioxide to find food, basically. So uh, your, your seeds, the roots, they give off carbon dioxide. And those carbon dioxide trails are what the wireworms follow to get to the plants. So if you've put a bait ball in a field that has a lot of green vegetation in it as a competing CO2 source, uh, that will affect how successful the bait balls are going to be. Okay, so what are some techniques that producers can actually use besides um, bait balls and insecticide? Can you spray for wireworms? You cannot do a foliar spray for wireworms. There's nothing registered. It would be uh, I'll say useless, really. Uh, you, you won't get the insecticide down to where the wireworms are, no matter what you put on. So there aren't foliar sprays currently available. It's just insecticides, uh, seed treatments, rather, for insecticides. Now, aside from the seed treatments, um, anything you can do to get quick germination and early growth, pretty much the same story we have for flea beetles, anything that gives you quick early growth will really help. So seeding into warm ground is good. Um, seeding at an appropriate depth, not too deep, might be helpful. Uh, packing the soil a bit might be helpful. So any anything to get that quick early growth will help you get through the more vulnerable period for wireworms. Um, where we often run into problems if people are seeding into cooler soil and the seed sits there a long time or that early growth is taking a long time, that can uh, increase your risk of the wireworms doing economic damage. So what sort of yield impacts do wireworms actually provide? 
more. So not it's not provide, quite as. But... <laughs> yeah, what can they do? Uh, good question. Uh, they're, they're certainly not as devastating as some insects like um, flea beetles and cutworms. They tend to be patchy, so we're usually not looking at situations where you've lost. 50% or 80% of your crop, it's usually going to be 5%, 10%, but even that can be quite significant at times, and it can even get worse than that. It's, it's often very patchy with wireworms, um, and again, not quite as extensive as, say, cutworms can be or flea beetle damage. So what does damage actually look like when producers are out and about and they're looking for wireworm damage? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. Wireworm damage can be very deceiving, and it can get blamed as a lot of different things. Um, what you will notice is um, plants just don't seem to be coming up well in an area. Uh, you might see that some plants have emerged, and those early leaves look a little bit shredded. That should tip you off that there's something happening, something's feeding on that plant. Now, the tricky part is with wireworms, you're not going to see the insect. All you're going to see is what looks like poor germination, or you may see some shredded leaves in addition. Dig around those damaged plants in those damaged areas. If you have a patch that just looks like things just didn't germinate for whatever reason, dig around, see if wireworms are potentially the cause. Now, there can be many reasons why things don't germinate well, so you need to sort that out. But do some digging, and especially, again, if you do see that the leaves... If they come up looking a little bit shredded, sometimes what happens is, although they feed totally underground, when those uh, newest leaves are coming out from the seed, uh, they're fed on underground, and when they do emerge, again, they're uh, a bit shredded in appearance. And are there any beneficial insects that actually uh, attack the wireworms? There are beneficial insects that eat them. One that we uh, know about that we've actually seen a fair amount of in the last couple of years they're called thrivid larvae or stiletto fly larvae. Same bug. Thrivid, thrivid is the scientific name. Stiletto fly is the common name for the fly. Now, they're about the same size as a wire might maybe even a little bit bigger. So they're fairly big fly larvae, very narrow, almost transparent, uh, no legs. When you disturb them or poke at them, they go snaky. They wiggle around rapidly and go snaky when you disturb them. So behaviorally, they're quite different than a wire worm, and they're a lot paler. They're very, very white, almost translucent, whereas a wire worm is more of a yellow to orangey color. So if you see something wire worm-like that just goes snaky when you poke at it, those are thrivids. They're good. They're eating your wire worms. And there's other things, too, in the soil. Uh, there's some ground beetles that actually... Uh, will burrow into the soil and look for insects to feed on. So they may be helping out as well. Okay, awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I think we've covered that one pretty good too. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Karen.